Um, but now that it's 2015, I've been thinking and I, would, I want to do uh, one video. Hey guys, uh, first I'd like to thank everybody who's been watching my videos so far. Uh, but now that it's 2015, I've been thinking and I, would, I want to do uh, one video every other week. So starting right now, this Tuesday, uh, will be my first video and every other Tuesday from then will be another video. So uh, sit back and uh, see what we're going to do today. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so in my last video, I showed you how to uh, prep your armature before you would go on to the full actual sculpting. So in, in that, you, you uh, skin the armature with uh, green stuff. Well, this week, uh, we're kind of doing the same thing, but I typically don't sculpt miniatures, uh, only with putty now. I uh, mainly use Fimo now. So in order to do that, you do the same thing as la the last video, which I'll link right here. But instead of uh, stopping there, once you get the skin of putty on there, green stuff, uh, you continue on and start adding thin layers of Fimo, which you'll see here in just a minute. Now, just like before, um, you need to keep the green stuff very thin. Uh, it's actually probably more important to do it if you're going to use Fimo, because whereas before your under layer would be a thin layer of green stuff, and then you would add putty as you wanted to sculpt further. But in this case, if you're gonna go with Fimo, you start with this thin layer of green stuff, and then you have to put another layer of Fimo on top. So if you if your green stuff layer is somewhat bulky, uh, it'll just get even thicker as when you put Fimo on. And, and since there will be Fimo on top of the green stuff, you can't shave it down uh, as you would if it was just putty. So if you did it with just putty, you build it up, say you got a little bit too bulky on one of the legs or, or an ankle joint or something like that, you just trim it off, it's no big deal. But with the Fimo, you need to make sure you get a nice thin layer of putty, not too much. So it's very important just to make sure you drag it all down, just get a nice good thin film there. Now we're moving on up to the uh, torso here, as you can see, and you can go ahead and skin the entire model if you like, but uh, for me, I usually like, when I'm, when I'm getting the figure ready to take female, I actually like to do the legs, torso, and the head, and actually leave the arms just wire. And the reason for that is uh, you can do the whole thing in one go, uh, depending how fast you go, but, you know, it just I it's kind of comforting to me to know that I my my the putty won't have cured too much by the time I lay it down, um, and while putting the the female on because it's the tackiness of the putty, uh, and as it's curing, it'll fuse with the female, and you want to make sure that that is a nice, good, stable hold. All right, now that you have the base layer of green stuff putty down, we're gonna start adding the female. Uh, I should probably go in a little bit of what Fimo is real fast. Um, it's a polymer clay. Um, a lot of people over here in the US are f probably familiar with Super Sculpey. Uh, it's a, both of these are uh, clays that are designed to uh, be baked in your oven so you don't need a special kiln or anything and they're um, obviously made out of polymers instead of natural clay. So anyways, um, Fimo is what I use, uh, specifically Fimo Classic. And I have a uh, special little blend that I make uh, to get the, gr the gray. Uh, but you can use any of them. You can use any straight out of the little blocks they sell for about three bucks. You can usually find them at Michael's or Joanne Fabrics. And uh, when applying the clay to your figure, it's very important to try and lay them it down in small, thin bits. The reason for that is um, if you end up putting too much Fimo on in the beginning, you can, it's really not about making it too bulky because you can trim a little off afterwards, although you might expose some of the underlying green stuff. But the biggest thing is that you, if you have to push large parts of uh, clay around during this point, you can actually shift the putty that's still not cured under the figure. Which reminds me, uh, yeah, when you're doing this 
step here, you want to put the green stuff on and you need to start applying the clay immediately afterwards. You do not want it to cure or set up. The whole point of this is to get give something sticky for the um, clay to stick to. If you just tried to wrap it around a wire, you know, it, it can be kind of difficult to get green stuff to stick. But with polymer clay, it doesn't stick at all. I mean, it basically really only wants to stick to itself. So by putting this layer of putty underneath, you can, uh, you can um, give it something to hold on to. And yeah, as I mentioned before, it, it just kind of fuses together and helps uh, hold it in place. So as you can see here, I, I started with the uh, adding clay to the feet and uh, the midsection there, just like I would if it was uh, if I was just doing green stuff. Um, now I moved on to the legs, um, and as I mentioned, you want to add small pieces. So for the leg, what I do is I roll out a very thin, long, thin piece of clay, uh, and you really do want it to be thin, and that way you 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 don't have to worry about kind of wrapping it around with your fingers or getting too much that would end up wrapping around so you've got this thin tube you press it down and then you take your tool and you just slowly massage it very gently um, and that that will flatten it the rest of the way giving you a little bit more to go around the limb if you end up needing to add a little bit more you can do that it's very easy just just take a little bit of clay it can be another small tube or just uh, a little bit you scrape off with your tool um, yeah. When I'm uh, working with the poly clay, I do use the clay shaper as well as a metal tool, but typically, especially in this stage, the main thing I use is the metal tool. Um, when you're working with a clay shaper on putty, it's it's awesome. It It's super smooth, you don't have to lubricate the tool, and uh, so nothing will stick to it, and it's great for that, but with clay, um, while it can be very good to use the clay shaper, you might notice that it actually there's actually a drag that happens. It actually likes to, I wouldn't quite say stick, but it does tend to pick up some of the poly clay. Uh, so in that case, I usually like to use a metal tool, like you see here. This is a wax five, which is really just a specific type of uh, large burnishing tool. You can use anything that's kind of got a large rounded edge just for uh, manipulating shapes this gives you a little bit more control I feel because you've got a your tool is more uh, firm and stable and uh, like I said the metal tends to glide over the uh, poly clay a little better especially if you give it a little bit of lubricant in the form of, of uh, moistening it some or uh, well I guess it's time to admit I actually use my nose grease I uh, just kind of rub it on my nose and just the oil from your skin uh, gives it just a little bit of uh, smoothness to uh, help it glide across. Now I'm moving on to the torso here. Um, this part, you, again, you want the clay to be nice and thin when you start. Um, you don't want to put like a, a roll up a ball and press it and start squishing it around because, like I said, that'll move the putty underneath around. So for this, you know, you 
you can start with a ball of clay, but then I like to press it between my fingers. You know, it doesn't have to be crazy thin on this part because you tend to have a little bit more bulk that you can create in the torso. But, you know, if you want, you can you can crush it down paper thin and, and stick it on, and that will do just fine as well. Really, what you're trying to do through this whole process is create a thin layer of clay to get it set to receive more clay when you're going to sculpt the entire figure. So you can, it never hurts to be too thin. You just want to make sure that the clay completely covers the green stuff. So obviously the, the flatter it is now before you put it on the figure, the uh, less smoothing and, and uh, spreading out of the clay you need to do while it's on the figure. Two uh, bits of clay is all you really need. One for the front, one for the back. There's usually, uh, as you do it more, you'll get used to the amount you need, but um, as you're doing that, then you'll, you'll kind of start to get a feel of how much you can spread around and uh, to get good coverage. But as before, if you, if you notice a little hole, just nick a little bit of clay off uh, of your um, excess putty that you have you know, sitting to the side and add it on there. All right, um, that looks like we're on the last part, which is the head. Um, for this, there's one part that's crucial to make sure you need to get it thin, and that's around the neck. You don't want that part to be too bulky, um, either, unless you are doing some uh, massive bodybuilder, obviously. Um, so, yeah, so you want to make sure you keep that part nice and thin. Uh, this is actually one part I have to admit that if it does end up getting too bulky because of the putty or because of the clay you add on, I actually get fairly aggressive with it and really press it down. Just make sure you get rid of any excess. Alright, well it looks like we're near the end. So uh, thanks everybody for watching and I'm excited to uh, show you another lesson in two weeks. Alright, uh, now don't forget, make sure you start sculpting. Don't just watch these videos.